2008's Twilight, the original movie, review and thoughts. So, longtime supporter, like more than half a decade, seriously, thank you, dude, and frequent commenter Arts Cafe requested that I cover these five films. In these videos, I intend to find positive things to focus on. You know, you are watching this video right now, which means you are on the internet. I hope that's not a huge shock to you. If you want to find someone hating Twilight, you don't have to look very hard. Obviously, certain things bother me. They've been explored very well by other leftist YouTubers. I'm not going to claim that I can get as in-depth about these films as I've seen done by some of the best of these leftist YouTubers. I'm going to be linking to several of these in the description box. But yeah, uh, I quite like this movie. Um... The, let's see, there will be some jokes in this video, none at the expense of members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. Now, if you're looking for a review that talks about, oh, the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by little movies because that it's not that much fun to watch today, and or it's different from the book, so it sucks, whether you agree with those assessments or not, this is not that review. And I realize this video is long, I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. And I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything, but if I decide at some point I want to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so, hold up an index finger, so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself and get into the thought section, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So, I have watched the movie once, and I record this right after watching. So, plot. When Bella Swan... Right, this is a direct quote from IMDb. When Bella Swan moves to a small town in the Pacific Northwest, she falls in love with Edward Cullen, a mysterious classmate. Yes, I realize basically everyone already knows... The answer to the mystery, I'm still not going to go into it in the review itself. I'll talk some in the spoiler section. And actually, you know, she goes to Washington, a place called Forks, which was named because they had the forethought. They knew that that would be the name of one of the best episodes of The Bear. And I think... We're just going to get into, so, yeah, uh, this was written, the, the book was written by Stephanie Meyer, and the screenplay was written by Melissa Rosenberg, and I'm not really familiar with other, like, you know, Melissa Rosenberg went on to be executive producer and showrunner for Jessica Jones, so, you know, big fan. And, oh, that's right, yeah, she was also executive producer on Dexter for 44 episodes of that. So, yeah, um, the, other than, th these are basic, oh, that's right, Hercules, the, the TV show. Yeah, these, these are the things that she's worked on that I am familiar with. And she continued to write the screenplays for the sequels, which imp does imply that, you know, she liked doing it and that the, the people who had a lot of influence thought that she did a really great job. The movie's directed by Catherine Hardwick. I don't think I've watched anything else. Um, I mean... There's a. I've heard good things about a bunch of the things that she's directed, and the the. Let's see. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. The. The the um. The book especially captures being a teenager quite well. Bella doesn't really love being with being around either of her parents, but she tries to find the positive, you know, she goes to live with her father, even though deep down she doesn't completely love the idea, you know, basically she feels like her life is out of her own control, and 
you know, socially isolated, like she doesn't belong anywhere. These are things that are very common for teenagers of, of all genders. I hear that it's especially intense for teenage girls. And, you know, basically, yeah, be Bella feels like either she or her mother is going to be unhappy with the living situation, and so she chooses to do what she feels will help her mother most, and undue burden placed on a teenager, but sadly does happen in real life. The book also captures the joy when your crush says something positive to you, how nice it is when someone listens to you, trusts you, shows interest in your life. And yeah, because of their somewhat strained relationship, Bella refers to Charlie, her father, by name, not by the title of dad, in her inner monologue and to other people, and has to be careful not to say it directly to him, because he wants to be called dad by her. And, you know, this is something that the movie obviously can't completely capture because it does away... The, the book is entirely from her perspective. Anything that's in the movie that she doesn't see, they, they made, you know, either the fact that we're seeing it is different or just it was invented to flesh out certain things that, you know, yeah... I, I thought this was a, a quite good adaptation. And and it's it's one of those things where, you know, if you like the, the book, I know for some people this isn't the case, but a lot of people who, who really like the book also like the movie. And, yeah, if you like the, the movie and you haven't read the book, it's it's quite good. It's, you know, based on, like, I, I heard a lot of people talk about it, I thought it was going to be hard to get through. It's it's good. Like you just got to take it on its its own terms, but yeah. Now, but but yeah, you know, the the book has a lot of Bella describing things to the the reader, you know. Not a big surprise there. It's a book. The movie does away with almost all of the inner monologue. There's a little bit. It's you know, sparsely, but yeah, and you know, like, like with Hunger Games, I thought they did a, a good job with it, and I really appreciate changing it from a first-person perspective, which works incredibly well for these books, and for many books in general, to a third-person perspective for a movie. You know, I've seen movies that uh, use a first-person perspective and do an amazing job with that. But here, I, I definitely do think, you know, an, another book adaptation would be American Psycho, for example. Fantastic job on keeping that first person in the movie. Uh, oh, right, right. Uh, the, the movie is rated PG-13, so will this video be? I... Let's see... Right, um, you know, in both of these, both the book and the movie, Bella does stand up for herself and has personality. I, I think some of the people who really hate this movie just didn't really, like, they're kind of ignoring stuff that, that goes against their, their point. Like, I'm not saying it's perfect, but just, yeah, uh, Bella does, you know, in addition to what I've just said, Bella does sometimes smile she does sometimes show, you know, happiness. You know, there are aspects about Edward that are, you know, charismatic. And let's see. Yeah, um, in, the, in the book, at one point, Charlie doesn't really understand why Bella is going with her fellow students who are going dress shopping for a social function, even though she isn't going to attend that function. And she has to explain them. It's for constructive criticism and her internal monologue notes. She wouldn't have to explain this to any woman. I'd like to think that I personally haven't made that mistake. I, I wouldn't today. But I've probably made similar mistakes in the past. That's a guy thing. That's not only a dad thing. And let's see. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, so most of what I have to say about the reaction to this movie has been said really well by other progressives over the years. But I do have to just briefly note, there are a lot of user reviews for this movie that literally just say, Oh, this movie's for teenage girls and act as though that's automatically a bad thing without even explaining why they think that. 
there, there was one that added, oh, it's for fat teenage girls. It's like, just, wow. And, and, you know, one person did at least go as far as point out. It's basically like they took a Harlequin romance novel and put it on the screen. Ultimately, this person still thought that was a bad thing, but at least that's something like, yeah, you know, that's accurate. You know, I, I haven't read Harlequin romance myself, but I've heard enough to, to be able to say, yeah, this is, this is that, you know, and I really don't think there's anything bad in you know inherently bad in that like i get you know being frustrated if you thought that it was something else and i do think that some of the marketing really does make it look you know like i'm not sure anyone was trying to sell it as like underworld certainly not like blade but there's you know they focus on some of the things that make it seem more in that general direction and yeah, some people were frustrated that it wasn't that, but I, some of the hate is completely unjustified. You know, yeah, some people legitimately seem offended that a big budget movie was made that might appeal more to teenage girls than teenage boys, and it's more than a little pathetic. Now, some people say that the chemistry works, others do not think it did. I really felt like it, it worked. I, you know, I mean, they did end up dating, uh, you know, Kristen Stewart and, and I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, Robert Pattinson, you know, and yeah, there's a definite spark between them. And yeah, some felt that the cast are right for the roles, others disagree. I really thought like, I, uh, yeah, everyone was spot on exactly as I imagined them when, when listening to the audiobook. Some people really love the cinematography, others really hate it. I thought it absolutely worked. Um, there's a very strong sense of just, you know, when, when the... A decent chunk of this is, like, teenage melodrama, especially about, like, you know, dating, and then also some with, like, friends and such. And the cinematography really captures that. And when there's tension, it also does a really solid job with, with that. I did see some people say that there was too much handheld. I can appreciate that. I don't really agree. But it def it's not for everyone. The, you know. And that is apparently something I, I hear that, at least at this point in her career, Catherine Hardwick used a lot of handheld. And, uh, yeah, some big fans of the book love the movie, others hate it, and some people who didn't read the book love it, and others hated it. And, yeah, I've pretty much already made my stance clear. And, right, I just want to say, back when everyone was talking about Twilight, I knew some people who loved the books and the movies. One of them was a, a guy, you know, it's not only women who like these, and, yeah, you know, one of the people who loved it was a young woman, but she wasn't some pushover. She was fiercely independent. So, you know, some, uh, some of the stereotypes about the, the movies and the fans just really don't hold up to scrutiny. And, uh, yeah, a couple of critic quotes. One person said, 10 years after its release, Twilight stands as a powerful, darkly stylish depiction of teen female desire. And let's see, one person said, it's pure fantasy, emphasis on the pure. It's a soft focus reverie for girls who want to be Disney princesses and have their bad boys too, as long as the bad boys are models of tormented self-restraint. And yeah, one person, uh, director Catherine Hardwick, who made 13, captures perfectly the breathless thrill, fear, and fascination of first love. Really well put. A work of surprising precision and restraint from talented filmmaker Catherine Hardwick. A parable for the dark side of female desire. It's weirdly powerful. And... Uh, hmm. There we go. So... I 
think that is about so right I'm not gonna give away whether it's a happy ending or sad ending but the ending fits with what came before I thought the ending was quite good and let's see yeah there as an adaptation there are definitely some things that they changed I think most of the changes make sense there's a couple of things that they pretty much had to, to change and let's see. Yeah. Um, so the characters, some people really hate Bella. I mean, she's basically just, it's, it's this thing of, you know, she is a, she's, she's slightly clumsy, slightly socially awkward and, and such, you know, it's, it's this thing of, there's, you know, I, th I think Kristen Stewart does does well. There's not a huge amount on the page for her to sink her teeth into, as it were. But the, yeah, you know, the the it's it's basically she's a mold for the teenage girl reader to to, you know, f yeah, fill, you know, put herself into, and and yeah, you know, Stewart does does well at giving her just enough like there is personality there I I really thought that I was gonna find her frustrating based on all the things I've heard over the years yeah I, I gotta say some people are really just yeah they just they, it wasn't the movie they were expecting and they're just so angry and so they just write like a lot of the stuff that I had heard about this is just completely inaccurate and yeah, Robert Pattinson does make Edward, you know, yeah, tormented, and there is a, a charm to him that you know you can really appreciate. Why, you know, yeah, um, Billy Burke plays Charlie, Bella's father, and he really does a, a good job. That in in general, you know both book and movie do a, a good job of making like it's this thing of the teenagers find him unbearable but at the same time you can appreciate like he is trying you know he is making an effort and i do appreciate you know bella does you know try to you know note the positives about it you know and let's see. Right, uh, yeah, Sarah Clark plays Renee, uh, Bella's mother, and she also does a, a good job. And again, they 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 get a good balance of like, you know, she's she's frustrating if you're a teenager, but you know, it doesn't feel like the character was written, conceived entirely by a, an unreasonable teenager. Not to say that all teenagers are. You know, you can 100% understand her perspective. And I think that is about... Oh, right, yes, I do want to... Um, yeah, um, Jacob doesn't have a huge role in this. I understand he does in the, the sequels. I thought Taylor Lautner did perfectly fine here. Um... I know some people really hate him. I do hear that after the Twilight, you know, his, his Twilight movie appearances, some of the stuff he's made since wasn't really that You know, I loved him on Scream Queens. I thought he was absolutely perfect on there. I barely remember him as Shark Boy. I only watched that movie once, and that was a long time ago. But, no, I, I thought he was pretty good here, uh... I don't know if maybe the maybe he's not as good in the in the sequels. I you know I will grant he's not asked to do a whole lot here. It is a fairly straightforward role. And let's see. I think that pretty much covers. I did just briefly want to say you know it was. Well, one of the one of the relatives of Edward, Jasper, is played by Jackson Rathbone, who 
Like, I thought he was amazing in Dread, you know, which... Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was a year after this, actually. Um, he was he was quite good here as well. Um, not asked to do a whole lot in this movie, but it was it was very interesting seeing. He's he's these are two incredibly different characters, and just yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah. If you've if you've watched that movie, then you might remember him from the M Night Shyamalan Last Airbender live action movie where he plays Soka. Yeah, I I vaguely, I've seen clips. I haven't watched that movie. Um, I stopped watching, well, not entirely, but I haven't watched that much M Night since like I guess Signs was probably, and then I you know, Split and Glass for you know, for reasons that you're. Yeah, I can't. How how do I say that without spoiling anything? I'll just say that. There's a connection between those two movies and something else Shyamalan did that I absolutely loved. Um, let's see. Right, and, and yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Is it... I want to try to pronounce this right. So his name... Let's see. Uh... Okay, Wikipedia is not helping me figure out how to pronounce his name. So I'll let's see. If I if I had to guess, I'm thinking it's like Jose Thuniga. Thuniga. Wow, my Spanish teacher would yeah hate that I could actually managed to get that even slightly wrong. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I really loved him on on Con Air. I've been really glad to see you know some of his more recent stuff as well. And and yeah, here he's he's playing a, a biology teacher, and he's the fun teacher. You know, he's the one who's like, guys, isn't this amazing? And it's just yeah, really, just very very yeah, w wonderful character. I did you know I wouldn't have minded if he had more screen time and it's so completely different like I'm used to seeing him play these very intense serious maybe even dangerous kind of characters so it, it was a lot of fun seeing him like there's a lot of actors who are talented but they can do like intense they really can't do like he's a he's a teddy bear he's he's absolutely adorable you know I've had teachers like that and just they're yeah I'm, I'm not saying there's something like wrong with teachers who who aren't that, but the ones who who can do that, it's yeah. If, you know, I I remember some teachers that I you know haven't had any contact with for like twenty years, and so so you know it's just yeah. And he absolutely captures that. Um, I think that pretty much covers the but but yeah you know I I thought the entire cast was quite good and I really felt like you know once the you know we don't meet Edward's relatives we're, we we see them from afar early on but you know a little later into the film we actually get to meet them properly and yeah like you know it's one of those things like Personally, I'm I'm fortunate enough to have an absolutely wonderful family, very warm and loving, very supportive. But I can imagine for people who don't have that, yeah, you know the 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 book and the movie. It it is like you know what a what a amazing thing to get because you know as mentioned, Bella doesn't have the you know she's she gets along okay with her mom and dad, but that's about it and they're not together you know and so to get this other you know family of in-laws you know I 100% I get the appeal and I think that might be about um, 
right. The, so yeah, the, the dialogue, there are 113 entries in the IMDb quote section. And yeah, they're, they, they tend to be good. They're all worth looking up, I would say. And yeah, um, I thought the, you know, each, each character has their own voice. And you get a sense of, uh, like, where the, the various characters are in, like, their relationships and, and such. And I think that pretty much gets us to... Uh, let's see... Uh... Should be around here so right yes uh, the so the movie is an hour and 49 minutes if you don't count in credits and 57 if you do count them and I I really don't understand what people are saying when they say it's badly paced I never found it boring at all um, I mean No, I, I, I'm, I swear, I'm really trying. I just, I don't see what it is people... I, the only thing I can figure is that a lot of the people who said it was slow were expecting, like, a big action blockbuster, you know. And, again, the, the trailer, which also gives away at least a little bit too much, you know, the, the action element is a bigger part of the trailer than of the movie. You know, and yeah, you know, some people felt tricked, and instead of being angry at the people who edited the trailer, they took it out on the movie itself without really giving it that much of a chance. Like, I'm sure there's some people who dislike this without it being like bad faith, but what can I say? Those are not the people that are getting upvoted on IMDb's, the, the user reviews section. And I think that, yeah, um, the best element is that it genuinely does capture the thrill of having someone really, you know, be into you. And let's see. Yeah, uh, I've already gone into like various criticisms that I didn't think made a lot of sense. In the description box, I'm going to link to the Princess Weeks video that does a really good job discussing other criticisms, the ones that are... You know, she, she titled her video... Um, you know what, I'm going to get the exact title real quick. So it is... If it'll let me... No, Twilight Hate isn't just misogyny. And, yeah, she does a, a really good job. And, as, as always, you know, if, yeah, if you're already familiar with her, I don't even have to tell you that she does a fantastic job. And, yeah, um, I think that is about what I had to say. So, yeah, um, the movie has a 49% on Rotten Tomatoes, which, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, yeah, it, it's not, you know what, the, the consensus reads, having lost much of its bite transitioning to the big screen, Twilight will please its devoted fans, but do little for the uninitiated. I can imagine, if I hadn't read the book, I might not like the movie quite as much. I don't think it's, it's not the only reason that I, that I like, but, no, I can appreciate, there are certain things that, I think it would have been difficult for them to, to get into the, the movie. But the, the audience score is 72%. And let's see. On Metacritic, it has a 56 from critics and a 4.4 from users. 
on IMDb. It has a 5.3 out of 10 from users, with the most common vote being a 6 out of 10. So, you know, that's not too bad, but there are also some people who've given it very, very low ratings. And there are currently 1,872 user reviews on IMDb. 1,231 if you hide spoilers. I read the top voted 100 of the spoiler-free ones. And of those, 17 people gave it a 1 out of 10. 14 gave it, gave it 2. 6 gave it 3. 5 gave it 4. 7 gave it 5. 6 gave it 6. 16 gave it 7. 4 gave it 8. 3 gave it 9, and 26 gave it 10. So, you know, a, a decent chunk of people gave it very, very high, but a lot gave it really low. And I think that... Yeah, um, I rate this 7 romances with a mysterious twist out of 10. And I do think, you know, so yeah, the movie is 16 years old now. I think it holds up pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of movies from this period where it's like, oh, wow, that is just, yeah. Um, I didn't really think this was one of the, you know, part of it is that the, the soundtrack doesn't get bogged down in too much of the, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I suppose I, I have not, if we're talking about this, this period, you know, the, the early to late 2000s, I've probably watched more movies from this period that were specifically for teenage boys. A lot of those have aged poorly, in part because of the, the kind of rock music that would play in, you know, and yeah, this one didn't really have that problem at all. And that covers the review itself. So let's dive into the spoilers. So yeah, uh, notes taken while watching. So yeah, um, before I get into like chronological, I'll start with, so yeah. Edward and the other Cullens are vampires, and I want to just really quickly get out of the way. I do appreciate when they run really fast, the effect chosen is not the best. I, I've seen movies from this time that did, you know, I mean, yeah, for one, the Blade movies also have fast movement. And it looks better there. I, uh, you know what? I actually, it's been so long since I watched Underworld. I did watch the first three. I think those were also at least slightly better on that. I, I mean, Catherine Hardwick isn't like an action director, or at least wasn't at this time. I, I have, I, I'm not familiar with her more recent work, even from like hearing about it. I think it basically boils down to that. And honestly, when they're like jumping through the air. I thought that looked great uh, when n near the end when James like jumps ahead of Bella in the in the ballerie ball ballerina studio. I thought that looked great, and you know when and and very shortly after the Cullens jump in one at a time, you know that looked great. So uh, yeah, the um, I think. That might be about what I have for, like, general, so let's dive into... Yeah, so chronologically, I really appreciate that it opens on Bella talking about, you know, I never thought about how I would die. And we see this, you know, I, yeah, like, poor Bambi. Mom already got shot. Dad's a real jerk. Although, you know, he warms up slightly when voiced by Captain Picard. And now he gets taken by a vampire. I mean, just, yeah, life in the forest ain't easy. But that was a good way of, of setting up, you know, yeah, this movie is in part about, you know, you could 
die brutally. You could be killed by a predator at any moment, you know. And that is part of the tension. And I really thought that worked incredibly well in both book and film, this thing of, you know, we don't know from right away that Edward is dangerous, but there is a tension to him that feels more than just, like, awkward teenage boy, you know. Uh, I kind of dug the, the, I, I was not, nobody prepared me for this. There's actually a little bit of, like, a spy vibe to, like, at first she's like, who is this guy that, you know, oh, there's these mysterious things about, you know, he disappears for a while and he comes back and, you know, the way that he's, like, hot and cold with her, you know, has this thing of, like, he's hiding something. And then, like, you know, yeah, it turns out, you know, vampires, and then they also have to hide her from James and and you know they're they're going to places they're trying to leave a trail that it's just like I I might have watched this movie a long time ago if anybody had told me oh yeah it's like kind of got a little bit of a spy thing going like I dug that like wow um let's see and the yeah and and yeah Bella's narration comes back near the end and you know we have this thing of you know, she's going to sacrifice herself to, you know, she, she wants to keep her, her mother safe. And, uh, let's see, the, the, yeah, um, I appreciate the, the fantasy of, you know, going to high school in a new place and everyone is like, oh, you're, you're the, you know, everyone wants to be her friend and, and such, like, you know, I've never written, I've, I've, written some 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 bad stuff some that wasn't terrible i haven't written any like fan fiction for you know if i was still a teenager this would be but i would probably have written something along these lines that's yeah um and apparently the the some of the younger cullens just keep going to high school for forever edward does say that he doesn't sleep ever that's the kind of terrible idea that comes into your head if you never sleep ever. I do appreciate, you know, he, he explains if we go to high school in a place, then we can graduate and we can stay for longer than if we don't, you know. So that, you know, jokes aside, I do appreciate that is a, a good explanation for that. Uh, right, I, I thought that the whole, uh, you know, Romeo and Juliet thing, I thought that really worked in, in both book and film. The, you know, I don't know why some people are saying, oh, it's a total ripoff. It's not a ripoff. It's a, it's a riff. Like, it's, have you not read Romeo and Juliet? I mean, it's okay. I haven't either. You know, I read part of it for, for English class, but like, no, this is, this is not just Romeo and Juliet, but with vampires instead. It's, yeah, there's, there's, like, you should, you should at least watch one of the movies. Some of the movies are, are quite good. But the, you know, and, and it's also just, yeah, the, the, this thing of, you know, someone loving you and, and wanting to be with you even if it's impossible, you know, that is, it's, it's an appealing thought, you know, the some someone loving you that much, you know. And I think that brings us decent. Right, I thought that Robert Pattinson did a, a good job. Like, you know, if you watch the movie not knowing, you know, I feel like you buy that it's, you know, yeah, he's, you know, it's it's this thing of like, why is he, why is he being so hostile towards her at first? And then, you know, when you, you know, I read the book first, so I already knew, no, no, he's super attracted to her, and he's he's trying to fight, you know, he's he's trying not to get to the, part, to the point where he might have to sing, I can't fight this feeling anymore. And, yeah, honestly, like, you know, if you look closely, you can see, you know, he's he's not holding back disgust. He's struggling to, to not act on intense desire. And, yeah, I, I really liked their, their dynamic, you know, so the, the thing, you know, she, she looks in the, the, you know, 
I almost said microphone. If I, I think I turned the microscope up enough that you can hear me fine. You know, she she's looking through and she's like, oh, you know, and I think the first one is anaphase or something like that. And he's like, do you mind if I look? Go ahead and look. You know, he, he looks, oh, anaphase. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> you know, and then afterwards, she, or, or yeah, he he checks one and, and says, you know, she's like, do you mind if I look? You know, if not for moments like that, I would agree. Okay, she's a pushover. This is this is really just annoying character. But no, she, you know, when he's being kind of a jerk, which he, you know, once you realize he's doing that because he doesn't think that it would be safe for her, you know, he's he's trying to to do that thing, which sometimes. I, I worry that I've probably done that to, to a girl that I was like, no, it, it wouldn't be good for us to be together. And instead of just coming out and saying that, we act like jerks to them and, you know, thinking it this way, she won't like me in this way, you know, just... If you're in that situation right now, don't do that. Just, you know, gather the, the, the courage and just tell her how you feel instead of... And the, let's see, right, when, once we do see, I, I didn't think that the diamond effect on his skin, like, I don't mind that it's, like, you know, I, it's, it's pretty ridiculous how people freaked out about it. I didn't think that the effect was absolutely amazing, but I did think that the acting did a lot to help sell it, both him, like, tormented and her being like wow amazing oh, right and and just briefly uh, apparently some people really hate the idea that there's romance when it like that the that vampires have this like erotic undertone and this romantic thing you know i'll acknowledge that like if you go way way back like um Bram Stoker writing, and the the film Nosferatu, you know, 100%, those were not romantic, but, like, I want to say it was, like, Bela Lugosi who added, the who, who made him, Count Dracula, much more appealing, much more, like, there's a, you know, you can, you can appreciate how people could, you know, yeah, find him charismatic, you know. And, and yeah, for, for a very long time, like, I think the oldest vampire movie of, like, newer that I can think of, where I, like, I'm, hmm, okay, there's at least one that I can't really mention, because it's kind of a spoiler for that movie, but other than that, Blade 2, definitely, you know, Guillermo del Toro, not a big fan, you know, he's on the record as thinking, no, they're supposed to be monsters, they're not supposed to be sexy, you know. I actually don't know what he feels about the Twilight movies, but the, the yeah, you know, uh, Blade 2, I want to say that's like 2002, something like that, you know, and Bela Lugosi's, I believe, was like 1930, so there's a pretty long period of time, and then, you know, one that's from the 90s. There's a long time where vampires were seductive, you know, male and female vampires were seductive. And I, I think it's kind of silly to, to get up in arms about that. Like, you know, I get it. There's a lot of young men who, you know, in the, to, to an extent it's cultural. We're taught that men aren't supposed to feel love, you know, lust and, and, you know, maybe familial love, but not like, you know, men are not supposed to feel f positive feelings for, for female partners and such, much less male, you know, but I, I really, some, some, some people just gotta get over it. Like, there's other monsters, you know, the, the yeah, just, just pick a different one to get really really into if you really can't stand the the idea of there being a, a romantic aspect to it vampires i like 
one of the first things I learned about vampires, like many, many years ago, you know, decades ago, was that, you know, some people really wanted to be seduced by vampires. And let's see, I think, right, um, at, at one point, um, I guess, is it the character known as, I'm just going to double check here that I have the right character. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Maybe I do not. Uh, crap. What? Uh, okay. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna find them real, real quick. Um. That's gotta be. Uh, let's see, and then, gotta find, the... yes, um, yeah, you know, at one point, like, the, you know, the Ned Bellamy character walks up to, to Bell and is like, don't you remember me? And I'm like, I remember you, you were amazing on Terminated Sarah Connor Chronicles, which, in Bella's defense, you know, that hadn't been on TV yet. So I'll let I'll let it go. Uh, right, I thought the the Stephanie Meyer cameo was was kind of cute. It's like everyone who's watched an interview, you know, immediately recognize. You know, and she's even you know the the like the the diner person says you know here's you know here's your vegetarian order, Stephanie. You know, so you know. Yeah, if you recognize her, it's like, oh, that's her. And, you know, if you have no idea, you're just going to think, oh, random extra, whatever. You know, it's, it doesn't derail the, the movie. You know, it's, yeah. I, I quite appreciated. Let's see. And the... Um, um, I think that might just a about um right i also i like that the cullens like you there's enough of them and they're distinct enough that everyone's gonna have a favorite you know everyone's gonna look at them and be like oh i really like you know that's it's either like that's me or like, oh, that's, I wish I knew someone like that. You know, I, I want to be their friend or, or date or something, you know. And yeah, um, I, I quite like Alice. I, I, you know, I'm always, I like characters who, you know, precogs, you know, I, I really think that's cool. And I thought they did a good job of, you know, she's like, her, her eyes are like rolling back and she's like drawing with a, with a, I don't know what those are called in crayon, I guess, is what y'all call those in English. Um, I thought that was a, a quite good, you know, yeah, that's, it makes a lot of sense for it to, to be like that. And, right, I thought the, the three, the trio of evil vampires, I thought were quite intimidating and intense. I really appreciate that we saw them before the baseball because, from what I recall, they don't appear in the book before that. And I do think that, you know, I, I, let's see, I believe that it is mentioned that someone is killing. I suppose, in the book's defense, basically in the book, it's almost like, wait, is that Edward or the other Cullen? Or, you know, is that a Cullen doing that? You know, and then we find out a little bit into it, no, no, there are other vampires, and it's like, oh, phew, it's, it's them, you know, it would be, like, just emotionally devastating after falling in love with the love of Edward and Bella to then learn, no, 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 he kills people, like, he's, he's a monster, he really is a monster, like he keeps saying, you know, and I think that, but, but yeah, you know, and the, the thing, you know, James, let's not play with our food. And also just, like, they're so sadistic. Like, you know, they, they come for, for the, you know, Ned, Ned's character. And it's like, you know, he of course he asks, who are you? And they're like, who are you? Always these questions, these ridiculous questions, you know. Just, like, 
yeah, of course that's what you would ask in that situation, you know. So, yeah, I thought they did a really great... Because it feels like, yeah, you know, they've been doing this for forever. They've been doing this for, for decades, maybe maybe centuries, or at least some of these vampires, you know. So, yeah, th th after a while, they would probably get annoyed with with human prey asking questions like that. But at the same time, it's like... Holy crap, you're about to kill this person and drink their blood, and you're gonna treat, you know, just, yeah. You know, the very, very, like, cat dangling the mouse that it already caught before eating it, you know. If, and, uh, let's see. Yeah, and I'm guessing the ending with, um, what was her name? Victoria. I'm guessing that's going to lead to, you know, one of the sequels she makes a return. I don't think that was in the in the book. And certainly, yeah, you know, in the movie, Bella doesn't realize it, so it wouldn't be in, in the book unless somebody else explained it to her. Um, I think... Right, I thought the, the baseball was quite charming. And uh, I... I it's kind of uh, cute this this thing of like you know three evil vampires show up and and you know it's like want to play baseball <laughs> you know that's that is legitimately a, a yeah very optimistic the, the idea that yeah we never did get to see victoria's wicked curveball and the let's see uh, yeah, I, I like the, the various dates, this thing of, you know, yeah, some of the time, Bella and Edward are literally just, like, lying next to each other in the forest. You know, it's very romantic. Very, I, I really appreciate these kind of, you know, romances in movies where it's not about, oh, the woman has, the woman has to feel bad about even, about the guy even lowering himself into doing date stuff. And it's like, just... My God, get over your issues. There's there's way too many. Like I I quite enjoy romantic comedies. There's way too many romantic comedies where they have to, you know, oh the woman has to feel bad about a, a date thing. Like, if you as a guy aren't enjoying the date, that's not her fault. That's like, yeah. Again, there's a cultural thing. Young men are not allowed to enjoy dates. You know, we, we're supposed to really hate the woman for, for forcing us to go on a date. And it's like, just... And let's see. I think... Um... Right, and I do also appreciate the, the appeal of, you know, Edward, like, carries her. And, you know, she gets an amazing view from high up in the tree and, and stuff like that. And, you know, you could really understand why that would be incredibly appealing. Um, yeah, uh, the, the climax, I thought they did a, a really good job. You know, again, like in the, in the book, we just learn that that stuff happened at, like, once Bella is, like, struggling to perceive the world around her, that's where the book goes directly to her waking up in, in bed. And then we're told, oh, yeah, we took care of the vampire. Um, yeah. Quite appreciated the, the view of... That's another thing I quite liked about her character. Alice, you know, jumping up and, like, you know, she grabs his head and... That's a pain in the neck. And they just, you know, matter-of-factly toss his body onto the pyre. That, yeah. Um, implied, because it's PG-13, but, yeah. That's... <laughs> still pretty intense. Of a, of a concept, at least. Even if it's not. And it is very sweet. There at the end, you know, he does take her to prom... And they do dance a little bit, as much as she can with the leg cast. And I 
really liked both, there's really only the two, but both interactions between Charlie and Edward. And, you know, the first time, you know, Edward wisely, you know, he put a glove on because like, oh, it's, it's cold out and that'll hide the fact that his, his skin is as cold as a corpse, which was also very nicely done. You know, she gets close to a corpse don't ask. And then, you know, it's like, oh, that's the kind of cold that I felt from Edward, you know. Also really like the illustrations they used when she's looking up vampires and just like some of that stuff was like, wow, that, again, intense. Um, let's see. There was one where like the vampire was gigantic and like, like practically eating whole the, the victim. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, that pretty much, oh, right, right, yes, the other, yeah, so the first time, you know, Edward and, and Charlie, you know, Edward's like, I want to, you know, properly introduce myself, handshake, full name, you know, explaining about, you know, Bella's gonna be out late, and Charlie, don't laugh at the idea of her playing baseball right in front of her date, like, holy crap, that, Charlie lost a point there, but other than that, he, he seems like, a you know, he's trying to be a good father, and yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, the other time, you know, Charlie's just, like, staring daggers at, you know, at Edward, and, and, like, you know, finally, it's the, the tension breaks slightly when, when Bella, you know, in, in her dress comes down, and, you know, there's some line about, like, you know, I'll keep her safe. Yeah, I heard that before. <laughs> And the, also the other time that, you know, when she's in the in the hospital and he stopped the car and you have this thing of, uh, you know, the, the uh, Tyler was driving. He's like, I'm so sorry. I, you know, this is my fault. I'm going to, you know, and, and, you know, Charles is Charles is like, you, you say good, say goodbye to your license, young man. And it's just, yeah, that was, yeah. And, and, you know, again, like it's. It's, we can laugh at it because, you know, she's fine. She wasn't hurt. But at the same time, we can appreciate, you know, to him, like, this is this is a nightmare. You know, he might lose his daughter. Oh, right. I just realized I'd, uh, this was supposed to go in the review, but it'll go here instead. The, the, um, yeah, the, the DVD special features, you know, pretty good. Uh, I could have sworn I wrote, did I? Huh. I could have sworn that I wrote down how much. Okay, anyway. Um, but yeah, there's some, my, my copy doesn't have, I, I'm aware that there is a commentary track. I've heard bits and pieces of it. But, uh, no, m but my version has... You know the the a music video for a song made specifically for the movie. It has some interview. It has some some con stuff, and the the yeah a little bit of behind the scenes also where they talk about specific choices they made. And it's very clear it's a passion project. Like you know everyone working on it has something to to say that you know. Yeah, makes clear that they they get what you know. It it doesn't feel like anyone is like you know just you know gun for hire kind of you know oh whatever I'll I'll take this job. Everyone seems passionate about it. I think that might about um. Let's see. Oh, right, right, yes. Um, I quite liked uh, Billy. The, you know, um, there was some, some really great stuff with, with him. I love how, like, he's so much more honest than the people around him. You know, like, you know, Bella shows up and he's like, your dad won't stop talking about, you know, you, you coming here and... You know, oh, Jacob we won't stop talking about spending time with you. <laughs> Just, you know, I, I know people from the same generation as Billy who are also just like, 
they they'll they'll just say these things, and it is like this thing of, you know, yeah, like on on some level it is kind of silly that you know as as younger people keep so much hidden when uh, you know, yeah. Oh, right, I appreciate that Phil was not made out to be this terrible person, you know. Yeah, legitimately, you know, we, we need more positive depictions of step-parents, because a lot of them are actually trying, you know. I think that covers what I had. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the sequels. See. Right, uh, Anna Kendrick's Jessica was also quite good. Um, I've seen some people say, you know, like at the end of the day, you know, yeah, Bella's being, you know, Little Miss Matchmaker, but she's kind of doing it because she doesn't want Mike to fawn over her, over Bella. Yeah, uh, that's. I can't really argue with that. But yeah. Um, next one I will do, uh, hold on, let's see, the next one is New Moon, gotta find in the schedule real quick, yeah, so, um, it, I, I should be able to do it next month, um, yeah, right now I have it listed for the 11th. Uh, May. So, yeah. Um, hit me on the comments. Let me know what is your favorite romantic vampire story. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video if you watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. And recently reviewing thoughts videos tending about very similar to this one. So if you want more videos like this here in luck, you can check out my back catalog as well as next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.